Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by giving you an eye test between the iPhone 12 and the Sony A7C with the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens, the camera I'm shooting on right now. The iPhone 12 with 256 gigabytes of storage is about a thousand dollars, and the Sony A7C with the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens is about twenty seven hundred dollars. So I was curious, can you tell the difference between the photos? Let's find out. A few weeks ago, I did a test between the iPhone 12 camera and the iPhone 11 camera to see if you could tell the difference between those two. I'll leave a link to that full video under the subscribe button. But it got me thinking, how does the iPhone 12 compare to the smallest full frame camera that's on the market right now? That's the Sony a7C. But even though the Sony a7C is the smallest full frame camera on the market, it's still a lot bigger than the iPhone 12. So what is all that extra size, the bigger lens, the bigger sensor? What does that all get you? And is it worth it? Can you really see the difference in the pictures these two cameras take? So before we get started with the test, let me set some ground rules. First of all, both of these cameras were set in full auto mode. So the iPhone 12 was in full auto mode and the a7C was in full auto mode with one exception. And that was the ISO in some of the pictures when I was shooting, I was adjusting the exposure manually. So I corrected a little bit for that in post. Now the Sony a7C Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens is wider than the iPhone 12. So it shoots a little bit wider and the iPhone 12 has a wide angle mode. So just to make it a little bit fairer of a competition and not so easy for you to guess, I tried to shoot both of these shots when I could at a similar angle. So you can't really tell just from how wide a shot is, which photo came from which camera. And I mixed that up. Sometimes I used the wide angle on the iPhone 12. Sometimes I went wide on the Sony a7C. So I threw that a little bit in there just to, just to, just to make it a little bit more difficult. And two quick last things to make the test a little bit more difficult toward the end. I did some color correcting on both pictures from the iPhone 12 and the Sony a7C, but I'll let you know about any corrections that I've done as we get to those photos. And last thing, the Sony a7C, all those photos were shot at 2.8 aperture in case you were wondering, but I think it's time now we're ready for the test. Are you ready? Let's go. All right. So here's the first picture. Now this subject wasn't the easiest to capture, but still after a little bit of fetch, our K9 model took a brief photo rest. Which do you think is the iPhone 12? The picture on the left or the picture on the right? This initially might be a little bit tricky, but there's one big clue here. Okay, did you make your guess? Well, if you said iPhone 12 was on the right, then you're correct. But if you got it wrong, that might be because of the differences in the white balance between both shots. The iPhone 12 is a lot warmer with a slight yellow tint and the A7C looks a bit more blue, which is more accurate to the actual lighting, but can look a bit flat initially. You'll notice though, it picks up a lot more colors from the carpet in the corners here. And the big clue is the shallow depth of field behind the dog here and here. That's thanks to the Tamron's F2.8 fixed aperture, giving you this nice blurry background known as bokeh. Okay, on to the next one. This one is a macro shot of a salt shaker. I think this one is a lot easier to guess than the first one. Made your choice? Well, you're right if you said the iPhone 12 is the photo on the right. It doesn't have the shallow depth of field, the color is more yellow, the sharpness isn't as crisp, and the focus seems to get stuck on this plate in the background. This isn't to say the iPhone is worse or will never look as good, it's just that the iPhone's smaller camera and sensor have less data and light to work with to render an image. I think in this case, with a high contrast subject and close up, it struggled. So I was curious and decided to edit the iPhone 12 photo a bit. Now they look a lot closer and at first glance, a bit more difficult to tell apart. There's still the sharp and shallow focus of the a7C on the right, but the colors, contrast and white balance of the iPhone 12 on the left is a little less flat with a little bit of color correction. So let me take a quick break in our photo test here to explain what does color correction mean? So what am I talking about when I say color correction? Well, let me show you. Let's start with both of these photos back raw. So these are how they came out of the camera. And you can see even though both photos are compressed and shot as JPEGs, the photo from the a7C gives more exposure range to work with. Here's the difference on the iPhone 12 shot. I'm turning the exposure up, I'm turning the exposure down, but there's an even bigger difference here with the colors. They tend to blanket the iPhone 12 photo. So there's a more uniform color change as I turn up and down the saturation. 
whereas with the a7c the colors are more pronounced even when i crank up the saturation and the black and white has more contrast basically the a7c is picking up and recording a much wider range of data and colors that i can later manipulate in post and that's true no matter what editing software you use i'm using luminar ai in this example but that's going to be the case for whatever software you happen to be using okay enough about color correction let's get back into the photo test is the iPhone 12 picture on the left or on the right? Take a few seconds to look at both photos, and if you said left, then you are right. This time I didn't correct the exposure of the A7C photo when shooting, so it's a bit darker than I would have liked. Of course, you've seen now that I can fix that using a program like Lightroom or Luminar AI, but neither of these shots is gonna look spectacular because the composition isn't great. So at this point, are you thinking it's worth spending 1700 extra dollars for a much larger and much separate camera. Let's get into some more photo tests, this time rapid fire. How about this one? Is the iPhone 12 picture on the left or the right? Well, if you said right, then you were right. The a7C using the Tamron lens is sharper, and you can see that in the elephant's trunk here. There's more nuance in the colors, the white balance is more accurate, and the shallow depth of field is very apparent up close. Good job if you got this one right. How about this one? Yep, if you said iPhone 12 is on the left, you got it. Here's a low light shot. Can you guess which one is which? Well, you can see the iPhone 12 on the right is struggling with a moving subject that's basically in the dark. With the A7C photo though, it gets more light because it has a larger aperture, a larger sensor, so it can snap the photo quicker before the dog gets a chance to move. Plus I can then increase the exposure and still keep a lot of detail in the final product. The blurry iPhone 12 photo, though, isn't much use, unfortunately. How about this one? iPhone 12 on the left or right? Right? Right. It's not as easy to tell on this picture. The iPhone photo is a bit more exposed and slightly warmer with a yellow-orange tint. I've got more room to work with on the A7C photo, as you know by now, but aside from the wider angle, the difference here doesn't jump out at you as fast. Now here's an interesting one. iPhone 12 on the left or on the right? Before I tell you, let me tell you I took this shot close to dusk. The sun was low in the sky, but the iPhone photo on the left, yes, it is the one on the left, has a bright blue sky. The iPhone is saturating the colors quite a bit here, which looks nice, but you lose a touch of the purple in the A7C photo that you see on the right. I shot the iPhone photo in wide angle, and it looks a lot more appealing right out of the camera. Now, if I play with the colors on the A7C photo, Here's the difference if I try to match the look on the iPhone 12. Now the a7C photo pops a lot more without looking over-processed in my opinion. Snowman on the left or snowman on the right? Yep, iPhone 12 is on the left. Okay, two more. iPhone 12 on the left or on the right? Yep, the right one is the iPhone 12. If you said that, then you are right. Okay, last one. Those of you who said the iPhone 12 is on the left got the correct answer. So good job on the camera test, depending on how well you did, but what does all of this mean? Well, it means that the iPhone is doing a lot more processing on the photo, so it gives you a better shot right out of the camera. It's not really designed for you to edit the photos, it's trying to manipulate the colors as best it can to give you a pleasing shot. That includes bluer blues of the sky, it includes a little bit of a warmth or a red color to skin to give it a more pleasing or appealing look. So essentially, there's a lot less that you have to do when you take a picture with your iPhone. It's doing all of that color correction on its own. And of course, Apple has its own way of color correcting pictures. If you took these same pictures with a Samsung phone or another type of phone, they might be a little bit bluer or greener or redder, depending on how warm or cool that that processing software tends to lean toward. So although the iPhone has a smaller lens there and it's got a smaller sensor because it's a very portable size it's small a lot smaller than the a7c because of those things the software has to do a lot more to compensate for what it lacks in physical specs you don't really get that shallow depth of field through the physical camera unless you're really close up to a subject but if you use portrait mode for example then the software can blur that background for you like it does in this picture of course, it's not perfect, and you can see some bleeding around the iPhone edges in this picture here, but for most applications, it's good enough. So it's really not a fair comparison. I mean, an iPhone is designed to do a whole bunch of stuff and not just take pictures, whereas the a7C is a camera that's built for taking pictures and shooting videos, and you get a lot of advantages from having this larger physical size, the larger lens. 
but it can't check your email. You can't send a text using the A7C. There's a lot of stuff that you can't do that you can do on an iPhone, for example. And when it comes to the pictures with the iPhone, you can get a great shot right out of the camera. And you can if you use auto on the A7C, but when Sony made this camera and when they make cameras like this, in general, they're expecting that you're gonna edit the photos a little bit. You're gonna manipulate them a little bit. It's a little bit overkill to spend this much money on a camera and then just stick it in auto and just shoot pictures with it. You're really not taking advantage of a camera like this with its dynamic range and the colors that it can shoot. You're really not taking advantage of it if you don't work with the picture in post. I'm not saying you should edit all of your photos, but if you're getting a camera like this, then chances are you probably are going to. So a full frame camera like the Sony a7C, for example, with this Tamron lens, is gonna generally give you better pictures overall, pictures that you can work with. It'll give you more light, a better shallow depth of field, but you're gonna pay for that in portability, in functionality, and in price at $1,700 more than the iPhone 12. But I think all of that said, if you compare the iPhone 12 pictures, they don't look bad compared to the a7C pictures, and for most people's needs, it's gonna be good enough. The pictures aren't bad, they look very nice, the video is great, and you get a lot of functionality for something that can just fit in your pocket, unlike a larger mirrorless camera. Now, if you're curious to see my full review of the Sony a7C, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below, but I wanna know about how you did on this photo test. Let me know with your number, how many did you get right? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.